Hi darlings, I hope you're all alright and keeping safe and taking care of yourselves. Right off the bat, I, want, I need to warn you of something. This is going to be a bit of a rant video because uh, Lou's not very happy. Lou's not a happy bunny at all. In fact, I'm actually rather angry. I'm more angry than Queen Angry of Angryland and I don't want to go straight into the video unless I give you a warning that if these sorts of videos are not your cup of tea, if they're not your jam and your donut, then you can click out and perhaps I'll see you in the next video when things are a bit more jollier and nicer and more pleasant. But um, today something happened to me and um, I'm still cross about it. It's now ten past, no, it's quarter past one in the morning. I can't go to bed until I get this off my chest. And since I think of you all as my friends and friends are there for each other in the bad times as well as the good times, I thought I'd make this video, get it off my chest, exercise my demons and then perhaps I can go to bed and have a good old sleep. Must have a slurp actually. I'm that worked up still, I'm a bit dry in my mouth. I've always said, I've always been honest with you all, because we are friends. I'm not a perfect person. There's good and bad in everybody, as you all know. And I have my negative side as well as my positive side. And that dark side, I call Sheila. And Sheila is in my head and I keep her sated with loads of chocolate and cakes and keep her under control with morals and manners and decency and trying to be a good person. But unfortunately, sometimes Sheila gets to rear her ugly head and tonight's one of them. So, like I say, if you don't like this sort of video, click out now because you're going to see another side to me, a real nasty one. Well, not too nasty anyway. <laughs> Else I'll get chucked off YouTube, but um, the option's yours. So click out now if you don't like a rant video. Now, for those of you who have stayed, uh, as you know, the last couple of videos I've done, I've been reviewing face masks because the joke is that I'm on a futile quest to find a face mask that's going to turn me into Elizabeth Taylor from Cleopatra. So because I can multitask, um, like most of us mothers and wives can, and also because I think a bit of beauty therapy might calm me down and chill me out, and I've been out in the sun a little bit today, so my face is as dry as a rhino's arse, I thought I'd combine a rant and a face mask. Now, the face mask that I've got, it's a cheap and cheerful. I'm not going to uh, risk, I'm not going to use um, a more expensive one on a ranty video. Because I don't really want to be doing this, but in fact I might not even put it up, but you know, <laughs> I just need to get it all out. So I've got a cheap and cheerful one, get my glasses on, so I can read it. And it's called Beautifully Scrumptious, I bought it from Poundland, you know me, I'm as cheap as chips. And it's a coconut face mask, be cocoalicious. It doesn't say anything about, you know, abating the dark side and exercising your demons. But, you know, coconuts, you know, quite soothing. <laughs> Perhaps it'll calm me down a bit like holy water. So this is the, the face mask. I, I can't, you can't see it, can you? It's, it's a cheap and cheerful from Poundland. So let's get on with it. And I'll tell you why I've got my arse in my hand. And uh, see if we can do something about this angry face of mine. <laughs> oh, I've got my bloody ears again. <laughs> I have to stop wearing earrings. But uh, I feel naked sometimes, you know. I feel naked coming on YouTube without earrings in. It's mad, isn't it, really, us women? But anyway, it's like a clay pasty one. So let's have a go. Right. 
here we go anyway with what I've what I was going to tell you all about um, today well no let me start further back because it started a few days ago um, on I think it was Thursday evening some travellers got onto a local field that myself my neighbours everybody in my neighbourhood uses for walking the dogs, exercising the dogs and the kids use it, you know, for games and things now they must have come later than night not that I think any of the neighbours could have stopped them get, getting on the field, you know, that's a job for the police, but it wasn't until Friday that I discovered they were on there. There's about 12 caravans, um, a pony, loads of vans, loads of uh, trucks and a few cars. And the kids are running riot, speeding up and down on these little mopeds. And these, I think they're called, they're like little carts, you know, four-wheel motorbike things. Music blaring, making hell of a racket, and a nuisance of themselves. And I went on to the local uh, neighbourhood watch thing on Facebook. And it said that they'd been causing a little bit of havoc at the shops and just you know make sure you you lock your stuff up and be careful of your dogs you know and just you know keep safe and my husband you know because of course me I'm a bit of a drama queen as I said to you on numerous occasions in my videos I'm a bit of a drama queen so I had a little bit of a Benny about it all and my husband said to me, don't worry, Lou. He said, the council, I'll get it sorted. And they'll be gone by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They won't be here for long. But I did say to my son, I don't want you going up the shops on your own. By the way, if you can hear some noise in the background, that's Milo making himself known by chewing and turning round and round in his bed anyway yeah so I said to James I don't want you going up the shops on your own and I don't want you walking Milo on your own because we use those fields and we use the footpath that goes past them and today I even went as far because I was a bit nervous about going up there myself I even went as far as going to my sister's village and going on a dog walk with her around the fields where she lives to exercise Milo. Because, you know, he's a he's a walk, a, a working breed. He's a, he's a border collie. He needs a lot of walking. And I'm not having him stuck in the back garden, stuck in the house. He's got to get out and about, you know. So anyway, this evening... Um, Milo was being a bit he, had, he was a little bit unsettled he obviously wanted to get out and about and I thought to myself and I regret it now but I thought to myself I know I'll take him out I'll chance it be alright there might be a few other dog walkers out there that I can walk along with and I went out and I was alright and I spoke to my best friend on the phone Lulu and we had a nice little conversation because I thought, well, if I am speaking to somebody on the phone, they say that's a bit, you know, that keeps you safe. You know, people are not going to bother you because they can see that you're on the phone to somebody, you know. So I saw a few other dog walkers, said hello. Milo had his usual sniff. And just as I was turning into my cul-de-sac where I live, 
finished the conversation with Lulu and just at that moment a load of kids from the campsite ran out from the entrance, the opening of the, the field and started throwing missiles. at me and Milo and I didn't know what they were at first until I saw some on the floor rolling away they were uh, you know the large glass marbles now I know people are going to be saying to themselves glass marbles that's you know the way you're going on about it you'd think they were throwing bricks at you let me tell you when a glass marble hits you when it's got a little bit of force behind it it bloody hurts and also, it's not so much for myself that I, I give two hoots about. It's my dog, Milo. He's like my child, you know. And they were shouting and um, I couldn't hear too much of what they said. But they were laughing and shouting. And just literally just throwing one, up, one after the other of these glass marbles. And basically, at that point then, one of my neighbours came along with his husky. And I says, don't go down there, Bab. Don't walk along there. Go to the other way because they're throwing missiles at people. Now, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was frightened, you know, because, I mean, I've had worse done to me with my job, what I do for a career. I've come into contact with some really nasty pieces of work. You know, I've been nose to nose with bloody football hooligans and neo-Nazis and all sorts of nasty pieces of work. But it was the fact that these little bleeders were throwing missiles at my dog. Now, I don't know about you lot, but I think that people that can hurt animals, they're a different sort of scumbag. Do you know what I mean? Hurting animals, to me, is in the same vein as hurting children. And people like that need to be watched. Because you're a, a special sort of nasty. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I got home. And that's when... Reporting it to the police. This is the thing that really got me. I mean, I'm angry at them for what they did to us. Don't get me wrong. But I understand it. They're scumbags. They don't know any better. They've been dragged up, not brought up. You know, they can't help themselves almost. You've got to pity them in some some way but what really has got my goat is the response that i've had off the police staffordshire county police this incident happened to me at 10 to 9 this evening at 5 to 12 i finally put the phone down. I couldn't wait on the phone any longer. I made two phone calls. Both of them went on for well over an hour. One was an hour and three quarters, I think. And the other one, I hung on for an hour. What my phone bill is going to be like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a free number or what. I, I never thought to check because I was that worked up and that upset and angry, you know. By the way, he doesn't have a time on this. I think you just put it on and leave it on for however long you feel. So I'll leave it on as long as I keep on moaning. How about that? So anyway, what was I saying? Yes, so I made two phone calls to Staffordshire Police, the uh, 101 number. Because I didn't want to dial 999 because... As cross as I was, you know, you've still got to have some ethics. It's it's not an emergency. And um, it would have been, you know, a bad thing to do to, to, to dial 999. So anyway, yeah, I made these two phone calls. And like I say, it was 5 to 12. And I just thought, I have got to get off this phone. You know, I haven't had a shower. I haven't washed my hair. I've done nothing. I was going to make a video, actually, <laughs> much earlier this evening. I didn't get my washing up done. Till half past ten, trying to constantly get in touch with the police. Now I don't know. Now I know it's you know, coronavirus, and I know there's you know a lot of people are short of staff and all the rest of it. But how many staff 
have they got working on these um, switchboards? They, they must only have a handful because the first time I rung, I was told that I was the 20th person in the queue. And then the second time I rang, because I got cut off for some reason, I was the 18th person in the queue. And it just it just kept ringing out constantly, now and again interjected with this woman telling you that you can go on social media and you can contact uh, Staffordshire Police on the website. Which, of course, I eventually had to do. I had to go on the website and I had to report what had happened on the Staffordshire website. Now, I don't know when or even if they will contact me. But another thing really bugged me is you go through the form and you fill out your details and you tell them what has happened and the area and all the details. And right at the end of this report, it asked me what colour I was. Now, this is my second thing that really, well, I was niggled anyway. I mean, I was on my way to a full meltdown of temper, you know. Why is my colour a question? Why do they need to know what my colour is? It's obvious I'd already described the incident, what had happened to me. It's obvious it's not a racially motivated crime or incident, rather. It's little shitbags behaving badly within society, antisocial behaviour, and attempting to injure a, a hu another human being and her dog. That's what's happened. It's not racially motivated at all. You know? What does it matter? What colour I am as the victim? What does it matter, actually, what colour they are? You know, people go on about equality and, you know, and, and everybody having it fair. When it comes to perpetrating crime and perpetrating antisocial behaviour, when it comes to victims, what where does colour come into it? Unless it is a, um, unless it is a racially motivated crime. What does it matter? Because I don't care what colour these kids were. They don't care what colour I was. I was just somebody that they were going to behave badly towards. You know, just as I don't give two hoots what colour the police officer is that will hopefully come to my door. Knowing the way it runs nowadays that I'll be lucky to get a phone call or an email. I'm not, I'm not you know, holding out too much hope that, that anything's going to happen or come of this. Because, you know, I've heard from so many other people who've reported things that nothing happens. They don't even get an acknowledgement. But I don't care what colour that police officer is. I don't care what colour they are, their gender, their sexual preference, their religion, their national. I don't give two hoots. They could be purple with pink spots and from another planet. As long as they're a warranted officer and they can help me with what's happened to me. You know, I, it's just, it beggars belief. You know, it, it's like they're, they're, they're purposely trying to stir things up and that really bugged me. And also it's the fact that, you know, I'm a grown woman and they haven't really hurt me. I mean, it was painful getting hit by them, but there's no lasting effects. But what worries me is, what if I wasn't who I am? What if I was a little old lady? You know, there's quite a few elderly people that walk their dogs along there. My life has been curtailed. How about them? They'll be too frightened to walk up and down there. So does that mean that they're going to be stuck in their houses until these people are moved on? It just goes to show that how a minority of people, a small group of people, can make things so awful for a large group of people. And why, they, why they're allowed to do this, you know, it, it's so frustrating, you know. 
I don't understand why there has to be this long, drawn-out process. Why can't they just be moved on? They're not allowed to be there. You know, it's it, it doesn't that land doesn't belong to them. They're causing havoc. Why can't they be moved on? It's just infuriating. And the fact that now I'm going to have to travel for however long it is that they're there, I'm going to have to travel because I can't walk down there again. I don't want my dog getting hurt. don't care. Like I said, I don't care so much for myself. But it's my dog. I don't want my, my animal, my pet to be, to be injured, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> I was so cross. I was furious. I was pacing up and down the garden. Cigarette in one hand, phone in the other, having a right old rant. I don't know what the neighbours thought. They must have thought themselves I'd had a bit of a Benny, you know. But anyway, this has been on for about um, ten, ten minutes or so. I'm going to go, I'm going to pause you for a minute. And then I'm going to go and wash it off. And we'll see if it's worked. We'll see if I've turned into Elizabeth Taylor. I don't know how much I hope. It was only a pound. I'm back. He's still there. Well, let's have a look. Um, mm, let's go close up. No, as it worked. I'm not Elizabeth Taylor. Sorry. But uh, I've got to say, I was going to have a little bit of a moan about it because I don't know whether this stuff's gone off or what. But it was a bit lumpy. It was a bit porridgey when it was going on. But I've got to say, you know, kids, it's my face is really soft. And I am being a bit, I do feel a bit soothed. <laughs> oh, Babs. Thanks ever so much for listening to me. I've exercised my demons. I'm feeling a little bit calmer. I'm <laughs> I've put Sheila back in the prison cell. Oh, I, I hope I don't come over as being a bit of a Karen. Because I don't want to be one of them. Because everybody hates them, don't they? But I was just... I needed to talk to you. I needed to tell you tell you all what had happened. I told me, um, my best friend Lulu. I'd bent her ear. But... I still needed to go on and because I didn't I think when it is because I hadn't I couldn't get through to the a police officer and have a little rant I think that's why I needed to you know I, I didn't get I didn't earth myself do you know what I mean by having a rant at a police officer so I needed to find a target and knew it and I hope I haven't upset you <laughs> but I do feel better and I don't know if it's a grateful Hopefully when I see you next, I'll be a bit a bit happier. <laughs> I'm sure I will. But I've got to say, I, I, I will keep you update with, updated with what happens. I mean, hopefully, if I do get a, um, an acknowledgement or a phone call at least, perhaps an email off the police, I will let you all know. But um, I'm going to keep away from there. I'm going to keep the little in, indoors. James, I mean, my son. And uh, I'm just going to have to take Milo for walks in another area until they're moved on because I don't want him getting hurt, like I said. I don't want anyone to get hurt, you know. But anyway, take care of yourselves. I love you all so much. See you later. Bye. <laughs>